I, I was an engineering major for a while, and one of the things that I learned as an engineering major was, oh, and that, just in case this was Brian, it was. Oh, he's not able Sorry, to. Okay. Um, that, so he emailed back and said he wasn't able to. So there you go. Um, so one of the things I learned with an engineering major is a, a big part of when you take a computer science class is a, a, the biggest part of what you do is what we call creating algorithms. Um, and the algorithm is basically like a, to a computer program, it's basically just telling the computer program what you're trying to get it to do, not with the code, but what you want it, the different things you want it to do. And that's what the script here, uh, the purpose of it is, is to lay out exactly how you want your broadcast to go. And it works even if you don't have uh, someone doing play-by-play, -play, but it's really important if you have somebody doing play-by-play. -play. So your play-by-play -play person and your director, the person running Blueframe, um, both know exactly what order things are going in and what is expected at each time. So as you kind of go through and look at the different things we have on here, we won't go through all of it, but you'll notice we have a welcome, Ruben, who does the play-by-play -play for basketball on, on TV for us. Um, uh, writes his own intro, but you'll notice that again with the different options that you have Ruben's giving his intro at the specific time that we say and the graphic or video part that's what the director is doing so the the director is putting up the CCA game intro and then when we when he gets to the brought to you by my Chevrolet he's putting up the my Chevrolet logo and they after they go through that then you see we do the ads are scripted in and they tell this is when the ad break is coming and this is what the director is doing when the ad comes. And then as you go through each different thing, obviously it kind of goes through um, uh, accordingly. It just runs through the game. Uh, I don't need to go through all of that. You can pretty much see how that works out. And when I say score bug, the score bug, of course, is he's just bringing up the part that has the scoreboard and the clock on it, uh, if anybody's not familiar with that term. Um, so that's kind of what the script looks like, and that's what we're, when we're going through, what we're going to show you in a second in blue frame, that's essentially what we're trying to do is we go through the entire game, everything is, is written in. The one thing that's different, and I also sent you a copy, uh, which I don't have open, but I sent you a copy of an in-game read. In men's basketball, almost all of the ads are scripted because we have the four media timeouts per half. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of the women's basketball, since you, you're limited in your timeouts, a lot of the ad reads that we have are just drop-ins. And so before the game, the play-by-play -play person and the director will get together and they'll talk about how they want to do the drop-ins and what signal that they're going to give each other for when they're, or, you know, through the, uh, through their headset, what they're going to do when they're ready to do the drop-in. So the play-by-play -play person is reading it and it gives the person, the director, the opportunity to bring up the logos as they come up um, and we'll, we'll show you how to do that um, and then uh, always by the way never forget at the end to put a your thank yous in <laughs> you know, it's funny how the students love hearing their names mentioned at the end of the broadcast so it's like mm -hmm. people really enjoy that okay now we're going to get into the blue frame or the the production track part itself so for those of you who haven't seen uh, blue frame setup this is this is what a game looks like when it's set up and ready to go. Um, and again, we'll, we'll do a completely uh, different uh, SID talk um, on how you get things set up. But um, just to go through the different options that you're going to have, um, your, your score bug, um, this, the ones that we use are the game setup, which gives you the option, like we have a My Chevrolet logo in the middle of the game setup. Um, our starting lineups, which if uh, we were to overlay that for you, brought to you by Holiday Seed Company. Mm -hmm. um, the Smoky Locksmith halftime stats. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the image overlay. I'm going to show you the image overlay um, right, right now. This is, there's a thing called uh, the image queue. And the image queue allows you to put multiple logos in. And so, and you can play them or you can run them one at a time. So this is how when we're reading our, our, um, our drop-in ads, he just brings up this image queue, and I just put two in to show you. And if you hit the, you can put as many in as you want. You see down here, it just gives you the, the option of how long they will run. And if you hit the play button, 
in three seconds, the Zeta Fresh one will change to the My Cars one, and then it would go through. So as we were as we're running the uh, the drop ins, if he has four drop ins in a row, for example, or however many that we're doing, we just have the logos put in the order that he's going to do the drop ins, and he just reads the drop ins as they go through, um, and it plays the drop ins automatically. And this would be playing over the. Um, in fact, I'll bring the camera up now. So. Again, don't worry about all this for, for later. Mm. Um, the, uh, it just plays over whatever your video is, as you can see. So, and then you can obviously clear the, uh, clear the overlay that gets rid of it, all to stop it. Now, so that gives you a way of just as you're doing your reads, that's how you would do a read if you wanted to put your logos in over your reads. For, for real ads, um, like video ads, I should say, uh, those go in in a different f fashion and they go in under see if you see the area over here on the left where I point to the video clips area and this is where you you can put regular video clips you can put your replays if you when you capture replays they will all show up this bottom section here is called the tray and they will show up in the tray as you capture replays and then this is where we store our ads and you can as you put an ad in so for example this is this first ad um, that I'm running here, and if you wanted to hear it, this you know, you're listening to it. So this is a this is a local ad that I brought into the um, that I brought into the the broadcast. Uh, another ad that like another ad. This is um uh, who is this? This is for Gur. This is Gur. Yeah, this is a Gur sports ad. Gur does a uh, apparel company that is one of our sponsors. Um, so these are all local ads. These are all things that we run locally. And they're in the script as well. You'll see where, where they come up uh, in the script. And as, as we get to it, uh, the director will just go in and pick the ads that we want to run. Now, the local, if you click on local, that means that when we're ready to run the ad, um, and, I forgot, and I forgot to tell you this, it has to be in order to show the ad running in the thing. You have to actually, um, you actually have to actually be live or be running a test of the game, um, testing it beforehand. And now, when we go into the uh, into the ads, now you see the fire ad button comes up. Local is highlighted, in fire ad. And so, if I click fire ad now, whatever ad I have queued up here, which in this case is this Gur uh, seventeen second ad. If I click fire ad, you see the ad break right here, and it gives you the countdown so that you can give the countdown to your play-by-play -play person, and then it's going to run the ad. And this, what, the, what you're seeing on the screen here, as I'm pointing to it, is um, the actual broadcast. That's what the people at home are seeing right now. One of the interesting things about, as you run these ads too, by the way, is that if you run an ad and the game comes back, the game will come back. And it will be come back at the spot it comes back. So you don't come back in the middle of play. You come back as you were. So if the game could be now at that point, if the game was going on and I just ran that ad, the game would be 17 seconds ahead of us. But it would still be, we would still be going live. It's just the, the live game itself would be 17 seconds ahead. So you don't miss anything when you run an ad. Even if, if the play comes back early, it won't skip any of the action, if that makes any sense to you. And uh, hopefully I, I explained that properly. So that's how you run, again, that's how you run a local ad. Um, again, if I wanted to choose a different ad, it's on local, fire ad. It gives the countdown again for you to give the, to your play-by-play -play person so they can come out of that, go into the ad. The ad will run. And then if you need to get out of the ad for whatever reason, if you just wanted to stop it and get out of it, you can just hit stop ad and it brings you right back to the game. So you can stop an ad in the middle if you wanted to. Um, and so the last thing I want to show you on the local ads now is, and I'll show you how to create one in a second also, but um, you see that this local ad here, you see it at the time frame or the time on it is 201. And that's because what I did was I made an ad list, an ad playlist. And the ad playlist, as you see it run, this is going to have 
This is one of the GUR ads. And then go further. Now we're into a different local ad. This is a Sullivan Tire ad. And what other ads did I put in here? Um, and then this is the, the upcoming games ad. Uh, and so you see how you can run multiple ones at a time. So um, if at halftime, if we go back to the script at halftime, you see I have um, playlist one. So the CSUMB internal ad plus the coming up ad plus whatever other ads we had are gonna be part of this playlist. So you just play the playlist and it'll run all of those ads back to back. And we like to do that at halftime because um, we usually run our internal ad, which as you can see is two minutes and 33 seconds. I'll usually run a coming up ad and then we'll pick one or two ads um, uh, to run as well. Sometimes we'll run the CCA internal ad um, and we just run those back to back to back to give the play by play person and the director time to get up and use the restroom or <laughs> whatever they may need to do. Um, and then as you see, we also scripted into that additional network ads. If, if that doesn't give us enough time for the play by play person to come back and get ready or whatever, you could just run right into a, another network ad. Uh, and so now we'll get into showing you how you do the network ads. And you see the local ads are all done down here. And I'm gonna show you how to create the playlist is the very last thing I'm gonna show you. But the network ads run off of these buttons here. And you can run them, you can run them off of the video clip editor window also, um, which remember we got by clicking on this. Uh, you can run them out of here also, but you also just run them straight off of your, um, your main production truck window. And you click off of local, so now the local ad, it won't run a local ad because we're not, don't have it selected. And now you have the option of choosing a network ad that will run for whatever length of time you want it to run. So if you want a two minute ad break, you pick two minutes, you want 30, whatever, whatever you want to do. So let's say that we were going to run a 30 second network ad. So I've got that click and we're ready. The announcer says you will be right back after these messages. You're watching uh, Otter Basketball on the CCA network and the ad break comes up and you try and time it, get your plug and play to time it so it hits the ad break perfectly. And when you're in the network ad, this is what you'll see. You'll see your logo and the ad break that it's going because you don't know what the network ad is that is actually playing, right? They pick something off of their server and that's what will end up uh, running through your thing. So all you know is the amount of time that's left in running the ad. Um, and the folks at home could be watching an EA sports ad or whatever it might be running and you get your countdown to where the ad break ends and then it comes right back into the game. If you were running a network ad, like here, we'll go ahead and, and pick another one and fire a 15 second ad this time. And it gives us our five second countdown into the ad. And just like with a local ad, if we, we went to break because we thought they were calling a timeout, but they weren't calling a timeout, we can stop the ad right in the middle and come right back to the game if we want to. Um, so you can do that with both local ads and with network ads. The network ads, of course, you make, you make some amount of money, some amount of sense every time you run a network ad. Um, and I don't know how much it is. I know over the course of the year, I think we made like $30. <laughs> so you know, we don't make, we didn't make a ton of money, but then we never had more than a hundred people or so ever watching a game. So it wasn't mm -hmm. like, um, we had a ton. I imagine if you have a thousand people watching the game, you probably make more money from firing the network ads. Uh, but again, the network ads are there for us. We like to run them not so much to make money, but because running the ads, a gives, your, uh, your operators, your play-by-play -play person, your camera operators, your, your director, a chance to take a little bit of a break and reach for the, uh, reach for the water or the Dr. Pepper. Mm. <laughs> and, um, uh, and adding the ads to your broadcast adds a bit of, of professionalism to the broadcast. It makes it look uh, you know, more like a real television broadcast when your play-by-play -play person is throwing it to an ad. So those are the main reasons we do that. And again, you do get some small amount of money for it, but that's not the overriding factor. So that pretty much uh, is the list of, of kind of what you do with the ads and how they work. And the last thing I wanna show you before um, I'll be ready to take some questions is how you create a playlist. So to add a single ad, you just click on the, op and the open button on your ad tray, and there'll always be one blank one at the end of however many ads you had. And it'll ask what you want to do. It'll ask if you want to open something that's already existing 
if you want to open a playlist that already exists or if you want to create a new playlist. If we wanted to open a single video, we just can go and pick, here are the different ads that I had loaded here. So I could pick the Sullivan Tire ad and now the Sullivan Tire ad is loaded into our playlist and you see it creates a new blank spot for me. If I want to add a playlist now, I can open a playlist and it will take me and ask me to go find uh, the playlist. So I have the local ads test, whatever, I just created one. And now that's going to add that, that playlist that I'd already created. But let's go ahead and remove it. And removing the um, playlist is control and click. And that'll, that'll delete whatever you just added. So now we're going to go and create a playlist. In creating a playlist, you're just going to go to new playlist and it'll bring up the playlist builder. This, the plus button allows you to add whatever videos you want to add to your playlist. So if I'm going to click on that and it brings me to my video clips and also you know, I could add, you can add replays in exactly the same way. So these are like replays from a volleyball match. I think that if I wanted to add a replay, I could do that too. But mm -hmm. um, if I want to add one of the local ads, then you would come in here let's say I wanted to add these three ads. So I'm going to shift select those three and open them. And it's going to see how it added all three of those ads to this playlist. And now it's going to be a new playlist. And so um, I'm going to save it and it's going to ask me to name it. And so I'm going to say, uh, Sid talk test playlist. And it will save it. And now it takes a second for it to, load in all the videos. So the more things you add, the, the longer it will take to save the playlist. And again, this is how we'll, we'll do a different SID talk on this, but this is also how you would create a playlist of highlights, say at halftime of a game. So if you wanted to create some highlights for your play-by-play -play person to talk about, and you want to run them all in sequence, as opposed to trying to find and load each individual highlight, this is how you would do it. And so now that playlist exists. So we can close the playlist. But now if we come back and say open playlist, now the SID Talk playlist has been created and that is brought into your broadcast. Um, so that's essentially, that's, that's all you need to do uh, to create a playlist. Uh, I will add one other thing too. Um, this is, has nothing to do with that, but just so that you know, in your documents folder, on your on your uh, computer that is where by default blue frame will store all of your highlights um for any game that you create so what i like to do is i like to to create inside the uh, you know go, we'll go back and see that again Let's go back and look this up um i like to create inside my documents it'll create a production truck folder and it will create a number of different folders and the video clips folder is where I like to store all of my replays and my local ad because that's the first place by default that that production truck will look for replays and uh, advertisement clips to bring into your broadcast. So get documents folder, um, documents folder, production truck, and then that's where I store, I make a folder for local ads, I make a folder for replays, and store everything in there and it makes them easy to find. Um, so that was kind of all I had. Hopefully that was relatively simple. That was mm -hmm. all I had uh, to, to share with you today. Does anybody have any questions or anything that they'd like me to, to cover in addition to or to clear up uh, with regards to what we talked about? Um, I don't know if this pertains to this talk, but how did you work with your play-by-play -play announcer on um, like highlights? Like you said, you talked about how you put together a playlist with highlights at halftime for them to talk about. Like, you choose a highlight and just tell it this is what it is, and do they get to see it before they talk about it? How yeah, do do so that? this is what we do. So when you run a, a list of, so let's go ahead, and this is a little bit different, but it, it really fits into the same. Replays and, and ads run essentially the same way. So if I was on the ads window and I click on the replay window, I can add replays in exactly the same way. So if I only wanted to add a replay of this Genitobin kill, um, now, if I want to fire the replay, uh, 
Oh, I hadn't downloaded it to this. Sorry. Ignore this part now. This is something that I should have done before. Um, so now if I want to run the replay, I click on the replay and it shows whatever I have chosen in here. Um, I'm not sure why Tobin Kill was the name of that replay. But <laughs> mm -hmm. It'll run the replay in the, in the broadcast, whatever you want to click on. If you just wanted to run the replay um, and see what it was, you can do it here. What we do is we hook an external monitor up that we, we use it for two things. The external monitor was also the monitor the officials would use for replay before the new replay system came in through Blue Frame. So, and that would sit between our director and our play-by-play -play person. So on the external monitor, we would have this. We'd have this window here. So when he ran the replay, he would be seeing, he would be seeing it run live in the broadcast. Uh, so they would say no, through the their monitor, headset. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. So you have the external monitor showing the same thing that you're seeing? The, yeah, so the external monitor is showing the actual blue frame, this blue frame window right here. Uh -huh. That's what the, uh, that's what we have on the external monitor. <coughs> so the person doing the um, play by play can see whatever is actually running during the broadcast. That way, if they need to comment on something that's happening live. So, uh, and again, we can go back into that could be a, a different, uh, certainly a different SID talk, but um, that way when we have the camera focused in on the bench at, a timeout, for example, the person doing the play-by-play -play can see that they're, that the camera, that what the, the viewers are seeing is the bench area. And then he, if he wants to talk about, and I see Coach Pace is, you know, talking, drawing up this player, or whatever he wants to say, um, he sees that happening live, and it makes it easier for, for them to comment on. Um, yeah, that would help. That certainly would help with the ads, too. Yeah, and then for the ads, it really helps because then, again, if we were running an ad, um, so if we're running an ad, they would see, not only would they see that, and again, our play-by-play -play person and our director have headsets on so they can talk to each other. So they're also talking this, but if we're running this ad, so I'm going to fire this local ad, he sees this countdown also. So yeah. it helps the person doing play-by-play -play to time whatever their bump to an ad break is. You know, you're, you're watching Otter Basketball on the CCA network, and they can time that into it. And it also gives the director a chance if the play-by-play -play person is doing something else while the ad is on, it gives the play-by-play -play or the director, hey, we're back in five, four, three, two, and, and then you come back to that. Um, so yeah, you definitely want to make sure that your play-by-play -play person can see um, what is actually running. And it's better to have them look at the blue frame, the production truck window, than it is to have them look at a live stream of the broadcast because the live stream of the broadcast is always going to be several seconds behind. Mm -hmm. So now going back to the replay part, now you said at halftime of a basketball game, for example, or in this case, we'll say volleyball, um, we would be, or between games of a volleyball uh, match, if we wanted to run some, uh, some uh, highlights in a row, we would create a playlist. And now we're going to go back and we're going to create a new playlist. And now I'm just going to choose a couple of different uh, a couple of different plays. Okay, we'll choose these three plays that we're going to want to run, and uh, I'll go. I'll go into this a little more in a second. Um, and now we've just chosen those three replays, and we're going to again save. Uh, that one highlight, so whatever we want to call it. And we're going to open that playlist of set one highlights and there they go and there, and there they are now if you wanted to run the highlights they would all run back to back to back um what we do on the oh excuse me what we do on the highlights is we tell the uh as as we're saving the highlights we want the the director to save the highlights as something specific so so that we have a, a name for them so that they're it's easy to tell what's what they're actually watching um and so if we were going to capture a replay and the capture replay and again we can go into this in more depth in a, in a different set talk but the, to capture a replay you're just hitting capture replay um we hadn't set up a camera for it yet but let's go ahead and say a five second replay on camera one that's the only camera we have <laughs> um, 
and close that. And now if we're going to capture the replay, it just captured, see the replay down here? Mm -hmm. ah. um, and so once you've captured the replay, and you can show it like right away. So the goal, someone just scored a goal, for example. That was my reaction to scoring a goal. Um, someone just scored a goal, you captured the replay, and you can go ahead and we're going to run the replay right now. And now it's running. The play-by-play -play person is watching the replay, and it's done. So we're finished with that. Now what I want to do is I want to have, these will all sit down here for the entire game if you want them to. But what I want the person to do is to export this so that we can save just the replays that we want to use, that we may want to use later. And so when he exports it, I want to export it and see how we have down here. We're exporting it to where we're hiring, uh, putting our replays. And I want to export it and I want to call it a name. So I'm going to, um, and we want to make sure they stay in order. So how these are done, how we name these, if you'll see on here, I name them by in order, first play, first set, third play, first set, third play, second set, third play, third set. See how that goes? I'm ordering it that way so that we know what order the things happened in. And then I want to name what it was so that the the play-by-play -play person knows what they're referring to um, when they watch it. So I save that. I'm going to say Kevin talking. I say one, one, Kevin talking. One, one, mm -hmm. Kevin talking. Um, and that's going to save that replay clip. And now when we go back to create a list, that's part of, right, that's, uh, that's part of why, the videos. Um, why did you do play three, set one, instead of set one, play three? Is there a reason? Yeah, because we want the set, we want the set number to be first so that it will line up first set, second set, third set. Okay, well, those yeah, are so set numbers. We do it that way. So mm -hmm. it puts them in, in order. Um, okay, it also makes it easier after the game when you're creating a highlight reel that you might want to create highlights to put on YouTube or Twitter or whatever it makes it easier to do it when you have them that way. Now, for simple things like say, just like a generic kill, once we've saved that highlight, so we know we have it here, and we can bring this highlight back anytime we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it down here so that you don't have to scroll through 30 highlights to find the one that you want during the game. We've, we've already showed this highlight right after the play happened, and we have it saved. And now I'm just gonna come back down here and delete this so that it frees up the space in our tray. So you wanna keep only the most relevant highlights. So in a soccer match, for example, the only plays that I would generally keep down here are goals. Mm -hmm. And every other play that we did a highlight of, if we wanted to keep it, we would have exported it into this list or into, into a video clip that could be used for later. The other advantage of doing this is it makes it easier at that point to, um, to share the video clip if you have somebody else doing social media and you're not doing social from Blueframe, for example. Um, the, uh, the social you can do through Blueframe, and that's again an entirely different thing. You can do the social post um, through Blueframe, through Facebook, Twitter, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, so it is an option, but, uh, um, but you obviously have more flexibility when you have it done like this. This folder, by the way, you could save this, instead of saving it to a folder on your, um, on your hard drive, you could save it to a Dropbox or some other file sharing uh, uh, place so that a about. person sitting at a different computer in the, or in their office or a student sitting at home would have access to those clips to put it together. And one of the things that we used to do was Corey would do all the, when Corey was my assistant, mm. he would do all of the video at the games. And so we would have all these saved and it would just be easy for Corey to like go into Dropbox, select whatever highlights he wanted to select and create the post game video without having to wait for, you know, me to give him the, the, uh, the highlights after the game. So that's certainly an option. And I think we'll do uh, a, a Sid talk separately just on, on a uh, instant replay. Um, but you see how instant replay there, how it relates to, um, how it relates to, uh, to advertisements, and they both run essentially the same way. Uh, uh, just the ads run through the ad 
buttons in the highlights run through or the replays run through the replay section. Sorry, I'll try and keep my question to ads. No, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, and I'm gonna have a few because I've never done this yet. So ads, uh, you guys saw ads specifically for the CC network games. Yes, we sold ads for well for all of our games that run video. Yes, yeah. So like in our case, we will obviously be working with blue chip broadcasting on the basketball broadcasts, and they mm -hmm. had their own set of ads already. We may have to work with them and say, okay, somehow we're gonna have to combine the two, and we're gonna. I mean, I, I haven't thought through yet. Maybe Brian's gonna have to start selling ads for us, so it runs both over the on their airwaves and on. Yeah. And, and let me tell you, see how that, this will work. Also, it, it's a good question, um, and. And there was a question that we had until we started playing with it and, and we figured this out, is that if you're bringing in, excuse me, if you're bringing their audio in, when you run an ad, that kills the audio. So the radio can go to a different ad than you're running. So, um, so they're going to they're gonna throw it to an ad. And uh, uh, however they, so like we say, when we throw to an ad, you're watching Otter Volleyball on, on the CCA network you may have to have them throw to the ad in a different way. Um, or if you don't mind them saying you're watching, you're listening to, or, you know, uh, to uh, Stanislaus Volleyball brought to you by Blue Chip Broadcasting or whatever they say, um, however you want to do it. But um, so you can make it generic or you could make it, uh, uh, have them be specific to Blue Frame or to uh, Blue Chip and still then go to whatever ad you want to go to. So when we play an ad, there are audio cuts out, so if they yes. play a different Yeah, so ad. you can't hear. When, when you're in an ad break, um, you can talk to your play-by-play -play person or whatever. They can talk to whoever, and it, 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 isn't, over the, uh, it isn't over the air. But, okay, but those are the video ads. So if we're just showing logos, like it was say the Fresh Farms, and they're talking, uh, the drop it, ad, talking over it. Right, yeah. So if you're, if you're just showing a logo, yes, that would play. They would hear the, the audio would go over the logo. You could do a live free of Zeta Fresh Farms when you show that logo. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, if you're running an actual video ad, that cuts it out. So if, if they were running an ad that was one that you didn't want to run on your broadcast, you could simply fire your own ad while they were running that ad. And, you know, and, and, uh, and then you wouldn't hear their ad. So at that point, it's just a matter of making sure that you run enough ad to cover. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's something he and I have to work out as far as what ads are running. If we're right. Running the same ones. I yeah, mean, I'm, our I'm, radio ads are completely different than our, our TV ads. So the few games that we had where we had to use Rob uh, Ponce's broad radio broadcast as our audio, um, we just had to be sure that whenever he was going to an advertising break that we were – so even yeah. if we didn't have – he went to an ad break and we didn't have one scripted, um, because his, his radio script is different than our TV script. Mm -hmm. If he went to an ad like out of the blue, we would just have to make sure that our director was paying attention and remembered to fire our own ad. Or network ad. Or network ad, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Does anybody else uh, have? You could. The one thing I've been learning, I think, is that there's a program overlay or something like that that's coming to blue frame or production truck to where you can get a separate computer and it's kind of like a screen share. I could be wrong. Mindy and I were in this conversation with blue frame. But it actually, this, like, go ahead. It exists, it exists now and it's called, yeah. I'll, I'll show it to you where, where it exists now. Um, uh, you have the option of, Oops, sorry, not audio. Uh, oh, I don't on this. I don't on, or do I on this one? Yeah, I do. Uh, of outputting it to what's called NDI output. And an NDI output, if you have two computers on the same network, you can um, output this. Your, your, uh, your production truck can be output to a second computer. So only one computer can do the actual stream part, can start and stop the stream, can switch cameras and things of that nature, because that all has to go through, like I said, it all has to go through the same spot. But the other computer can do all of the replays and the graphics and everything like that and the social media. And so our goal is to eventually get to a spot where we have two computers 
and two separate people running it. So essentially you have a director and a producer. And the, uh, the director is the one that's actually switching cameras and firing the ads and things of that nature. And the, the second person is the one that is updating the, the graphics and doing the social media and uh, putting together the replay lists and things of that nature. So that, that exists, that exists already. Yeah. So who does the commercial ads? Is it the director or the producer? Yeah, that's, that would be the director. That's the person that's actually running the actual broadcast would be the one that fires the ads. They, they're the one that fires the replays. So when you run a replay, that would be the director. Um, the person that's switching cameras is the director, but the second person that's connected via NDI could manipulate the replays, can manipulate the, the graphics and the overlays, um, can do the social media, can do all the other things. But the actual video part itself that goes out is all off of the main computer. And that's, the director has control of that. I, I will say I'll vouch for that Dropbox on the replay clips. and. Uh, it really does make a difference in the world for Kyber and me, but um, is that Dropbox, how is, could you like, let's say for example, you have a playlist of advertisements, but you have an overlap, right? With another, let's say we have an overlap. Um, is there a way to like send that to Blueframe and make it a playlist through a cloud system or does it have to be uploaded every computer we use? Yeah, for, unless you're doing the NDI connection between computers, it has to be um, uh, it has to be on the main computer. Is where the the. What I'm getting at, I'm, what I'm getting at is if we have two different games, right? Oh, I see. You know, we have a baseball and basketball. Right. How is it? Are we allowed to? Are we capable of just like emailing Blueframe? Here's a, a playlist. Can we upload that to a cloud? for the other computer to download? Or yeah, essentially to, you could to... then like, so if, if you wanted to put, have someone putting together your first half highlights for you at a basketball game, for example, and that person could be anywhere, right? Could be sitting in an office somewhere. Um, they're getting the clips off of, blue, uh, off of blue frame that are coming into the Dropbox. Then you wouldn't be able to create them in the same blue frame broadcast because the, the main broadcast has to be on one computer. Um, but even without using NDI, you could drop all of those highlights into iMovie, for example, and then export it back to the, um, into the Dropbox folder. And then the person at running Blueframe could just, when we said, when we go back into, um, we go back into here and wants to do it after you created a video, like or say Kyber's back in the office and he's creating a video, he drops five highlights into iMovie and then puts that file into, um, into your Dropbox folder. That would show up in your Dropbox folder and you could just add the video like it was any other video. So the second person doesn't have to be using Blueframe at all for that to happen. What about advertisements? Like if, um, you know, like say I have a, a you have that. You already have your uh, in-house advertisement, your local ads, right? Right. You have it all laid out, um, and then we. But there's a point where we have to use a second computer for a different broadcast. Right. It, does Blue Frame uh, does Blue Frame have that capability where we could just download it, or do we have to upload that on a different, like put it in a flash drive and then transfer it to another? Yeah, you, another computer, yeah. Yeah, you have to. You have to put them on the second computer. So they don't, they won't, they don't list in the cloud. They don't, your ads don't list in the cloud somewhere. Yeah. Um, but again, if you left them all in a Dropbox folder, everyone could then you wouldn't have, yeah, then they would just be there. Right. And, that, right. and that's generally my recommendation is to keep everything in one place like that. Um, just because uh, then you have access to it wherever you are. And it happens sometimes where we're running a certain ad during a, 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 uh, a women's basketball game that we're not running during a men's basketball game, for example. Um, and so you bring your flash drive up and you forgot to put an ad on 
to that flash drive and oh crap I, but if you keep all of your ads in a like i do in a folder called local ads and every time you add a new local ad you just drop it into that folder in dropbox then they're all available and then before the game one of the things that the director is doing as they're creating the game is they're going and they're they're loading in um each local ad that they want because every time you start a new broadcast you have uh you have to bring in the ads from scratch that uh can i get everybody uh get every juices flowing a little bit on that and um nobody else has any other questions i'm going to go ahead and in uh uh, let's stop the recording and we'll get ready to uh, to post this in a, in a few days. Awesome. Um, I'm always available, obviously, to answer any more questions if anybody has other questions to ask. Um, and we'll go over some of this again when we do uh, a SID talk on just on replays and, and how to manipulate replays. Uh, I, have, I got a question for you, Kevin. Um, have you, uh, how do you, uh, with no ad breaks, like what do you do for soccer? You know, that do you just wait until halftime or do you have plans on running an ad pop up during the match? Yeah, you, you do have, um, we don't do this, but you can run picture in picture is an option. And so that is the, you do have the ability to throw in a lower corner of an ad that you could run, an actual video ad that you could run during a game. But for us, in game ads are all the drop ins. So, you know, and you know how it is in soccer. You just find a time when, you know, your ball goes far out of play or you know, somebody is pretending to be injured or whatever might happen during a soccer game. And, um, and you use that time to run your drop-ins uh, with, um, with uh, image overlay. And then at halftime is when we run halftime, pre-game, halftime, and post-game is when we, we run the actual video ads. Okay. Appreciate you doing this, Kevin. No, they, yeah, it's uh, they like said. I think that um, I think that for everybody, it you know, it's going to start looking better when uh, it's going to start looking better when we get to that point where everyone is doing uh, everyone's doing the replays and everyone's doing the advertisements, and it looks like all of us are doing professional mm -hmm. level uh, uh, broadcasts. And and to me adding advertising into it, even if it's just the network ads, really kind of helps that happen. So. Yeah.